No, the whole joke is like. All right, welcome back. I'm here with uh, Brian DeMars. We're going to be getting ready for the next round here, which is going to be Boggles versus Tron. But I guess before we talk about that, let's go ahead and talk about your last match here. What were your thoughts on it? Oh, man, it was a nail biter for sure. Yeah, they were pretty uh, wild games. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I've played four games and I'm only getting six times, <laughs> but I'm 4 0. Yeah, you've been uh, stomping with Stompy. It's been going well for you. That's, I guess that's why they call it Stompy, huh? <laughs> All right, so Boggles versus uh, White Tron. So, how do you see the matchup here? Well, I kind of think the Boggles is probably favored, honestly. Oh, I definitely think so. So, uh, Brian Koval over here has one patrician scored in the sideboard and one standard bear, but the standard bear has to come down turn two because he has only the one scorn to uh, remove the enchantments that come down before standard bear. So I'm yeah, thinking he he's uh, fighting an uphill battle here. Yeah, he's going to have to draw those sideboard cards. I was, when I saw I was playing, that Tron was in my pod, I was like very surprised to see like, I was expecting moments, peace and ghostly flicker, but yeah, it's a newer it's list. It's a very different list. Lately. Taking advantage of the the astrolabe and the gating creatures. Yeah, so it's basically it's less of a Tron deck and more of an evolution of the old uh, Skyfisher decks, because now that you have the eight mana fixing artifacts, throwing Tron lands in there with Mall Drifters is a fair, it's a bit of a free roll now. Yeah, it's kind of like he gets to free roll the Tron and just like cast the big fireballs or whatever. Yeah, so I'm thinking. As the probably best way to beat Boggles here is to have a uh, creature start and the Boggles player doesn't see the Armadillo Cloak and then you can get a big torch in for 12 or so and steal the game through there. But that's okay, about I the only that, way I'm seeing it. Yeah, that's the, the path other than just a non-functional right Boggles team. hand. Yeah, Boggles always has that fail rate you, you can don't rely have on. Even, but, just say that it but his creatures aren't really big enough to, you you know, to block stack. down a Boggle once it gets to be about a 5-5 five, five or a 6-6. Six, six, no, so. they aren't. He's going to be looking to jump block them every time. So when the Trample Enchantment shows up, he's got to be a little scared. So you were, you were saying he does have a couple of good sideboard cards. That that could certainly carry. Close exactly a couple. There is only two cards here he's looking to draw into, which is a little scary when you don't have a whole lot of card selection. All right, well, it sounds like we're ready, so we're going to go ahead and move into the game here. It looks like we're getting some hands there, but have the uh, popper challenge up in the center. Uh, so I am seeing a turn one Astrolabe with Natural Tron in this hand. That is a very, very strong hand. Whether it matters to Boggles or not is another question, but that's looking good. On the Definitely other side, hit. I'm I see Rancor and a few Boggles, but no big Ethereal Armor or Mask. Well, he's got the Cartouche. Oh, the there's the Ethereal strike, Armor. It was so cut the, off, yeah. And a Cartouche. So that basically makes it so that... Uh, the Tron player is just going to be chump blocking. Yeah, so he's just looking for the uh, life gain now. He's got the first strike, he's got the trample, and he has the bogle. So he just wants to go ahead and gain life to make sure he doesn't get uh, stolen by a torch. And Andreas has seen, knows the list, so he knows like he just needs a barely functional hand to be in really good shape. So yeah, he just needs bare minimum to get there. Over there. Probably looking around turn five or six with a hand like this. And I don't think Tron's going to be able to get set up in time. There's no strands in the uh, Tron hand, and uh, they do have Glint Hawk, but that's about it. <coughs> Yell at him some more, Richie. It's your drawer. What? Yell at him some more. It's your drawer. Make sure you uh, We're it. still looking at just the challenge here. We can't see the actual gameplay yet. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Oh, there wow. we go. Did he mold? Is it a mold of four? What's going on? Oh. oh, they're like already well underway. Yeah, they're rolling. So that's <laughs> a triple hawk. That's a very powerful start in any fair matchup. But unfortunately for Koval here, this is not a fair matchup. And it's Call just going to get top. worse. Yep. Any enchantment off the top is just bad news now. And there's the mask. That should seal up probably a turn five kill. Because it's going to be a turn four mass. So, yeah, it's, we're looking around turn five here unless uh, Strands is found. 
Has Tron, but it's not going to help him here. How many copies of Strands does uh, Brian have? He has, he has two copies he's drawing to. So he could chain uh, two Strands together. Yeah, and thinking two Strands is going to be the way to do it. I don't know if one Strands gets there, though, is the problem. It, one Strands one strand does get there because he smacks for uh, six here, Strands on the next turn, smacks for another six, plays a white dude, and flashes it back. So he gets one more look off this next prophetic prism. If he finds strands, he does actually have the kill. But he decides to play Skyfisher instead. And that's gonna that's gonna kill him here. Because he yeah. needs to have strands. But he doesn't know about the mask, so he we're working with the information here. And he also just doesn't have a strands or a way to draw yeah. a card and get a strand, so. Well he could have gone for Prophetic Prism over Skyfisher. But would that have Going left for the three mana open? It would have, because he had oh, a power okay. plant then, yeah, tower. That, that would have... But he doesn't that. know he's dead oh. yet, so it's kind of hard to make that line. You want to develop dudes as much as you can. And that'll wrap up game one pretty quickly. Solid Boggles hand here. Do not see the fail rate. Right? All right, so sideboard, we know there's the two, uh, the Scorn and the Standard Bear from Koval, but what do we have from Peterson here? There's a lot of one ofs. It's kind of hard to take in. Uh, I don't think he wants Life Link. I don't think he wants that shot. Link. I could see him bringing his Standard Bear in. They're both operating on one Standard Bear, but with the way they work out, there are two Standard Bears on the battlefield. The Boggle player can target their own Standard Bear and get around it like that. Uh, but I think for the most part, you could bring in flaring pain to uh, like get yeah. around the the prismatic strains. I can see flaring pain and I can see standard bear, but for the most part, I think uh, Peterson just wants to do the boggle thing as consistently as possible. You could bring in the cartouche of strength too. Other I don't think it's quite worth it. He's bringing in relic over here. That's interesting. Well, he's got so uh, many dead cards to board out. He has all these journey to nowheres. No, I meant on Peterson's side. Oh, on Peterson's side? Yeah. I like. I don't hate the Relic when you're just cutting Journey, because cantrip's a cantrip over stuff like that. I don't as even see as, Relic in his sideboard. As far as the... Uh, I think he has one Relic there. Yeah, there's one Relic. Oh, it's on page two. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, he's got a lot of one-ons in the sideboard. So the... Uh, I don't think you brought it in... The elemental, I don't remember saying, what is its name? Give me a second here. The fault grinders came in because they're probably better than a journey to nowhere. It has a body attached to it, which is probably better than a dead journey to nowhere, but still not great. Oh, we're underway. Yeah, Peterson is looking at a pretty good hand here. Both hands are actually really great. Uh, Koval has the dream hand of turn three drifter here, so can't complain about that. Sure. Look for those sideboard cards. Second armor shows up off the top. Just in for five, no big deal. Yeah, the turn two five damage is painful. It's a blisteringly fast start. And that's all Peterson wants. He wants to kill uh, Koval before he finds the one of Patrician Scorn. Let's see what Moldrifter brings. Not a sideboard card. Yeah, no, more redraws, though. I don't know how much time he has. I'm thinking he's dead turn four here with the second armor coming down. Uh, it's a little small for me. I can't quite see the power. So let's It's see. six right now, and it looks like it's going to... Uh, yeah, it's definitely lethal. Five, so it'll be yeah. 11. So Koval is on strands or scorn, and then he's dead after. He throws the 2-2 in front of it to gain two life, but it's not going to help too much there. Torch off the top isn't going to do it. Uh, how many looks does he have before he's drawn dead? Scorn, he can tap all the way down. So I think we're going to see cycle some. Yeah, all he's got is the prism. Play another prism. 
another or Tron deep line. analysis. So I actually um Tron mana tapping here. He has he's drawing to prismatic strands, but he tapped his tower and his power plant with no extra tower in hand. So even if he does draw it here, he's not going to have the three mana to hold it up anymore. But if he had played the power plant first and tapped four, he could have possibly drawn into it. But I don't... I can't, I can't see what the last Yeah, the, oh, it was the strand, so it definitely did matter here on how he tapped his Tron lands, because he does have a land drop this turn. So if he had uh, tapped four instead of five, it could have worked out for him. But I think we're going to see the game end here. Ooh, discard, I guess, works out. That's still an entire turn you lost off uh, land sequencing, unless I'm missing the turn count. Because he had to give up his land drop to discard the strands here, right? Yeah, because he was on the he was on the play. Yeah, it's a pretty big hit there. An entire turn of searching for Patrician Scorn has been lost. Uh, mass shows up, but at this point, uh, lethal attack is showing up every turn. So, I really like holding on to the enchantment. Sometimes. Uh, well, if you know, oh the only goodness. way to the scorn shows scorn. up. Okay. Yeah, I was actually about to say this. If the scorn does show up, a lot of boggle players like to just big the build the big boggle. Like if my opponent has weather the storm, but uh, scorn showing up here is Peterson's going to get rewarded for his patience and still have enough to rebuild with. So you have a game of magic now. Scorn, correct me if I'm wrong, you can play it for free if you played a white creature or just a white spell. I think it's a white spell, but I could be wrong. Either way, it's going to work out, but... It's been a while since I've seen that card. I'm always playing Tron, so I want to make sure I know how all these hate cards work. So Koval is going to develop quite a few flying creatures here, get some pressure. How much mana is he looking at on Torch? He's got 9. He'll be at, be at 11 next turn, so a Torch for 10. He's 2 off lethal next turn if he attacks. Just a white spell. White spell. What do you mean? He may just be... He does not attack with the Glint Hawk, though. I guess once it, the clock doesn't matter. So he's he needs to uh, survive two more turns here and get a big old torch off. We can play Mask doable. and Rancor here. Yeah, that's going to be plus... That's going to be a six power Bogle. Pushing through. Goes for the uh, cloak instead, though. Doesn't attack, just wants to hold up for the mask next turn. How much damage is that going to be next turn? So we've got plus four, and plus another four from mask. So it's going to be plus eight, nine power. So it's going to put these core sky fishers in chump block mode. Yeah. Unless he can find a prismatic strands. But I think if he finds a prismatic strands, he might have the game here. Ah, uh, he. Because you'd be able to just get fairly. Torch big here. There's the Fog Grinder, which is actually not bad at all here. I believe it's a 4-4 body on it. And that's quite a bit of toughness to throw under the bus while you can deal some damage to get your torch into range. So, the 4-4 uh, better than the Journey to Nowhere is definitely being relevant. <laughs> Alright, here it comes. Fog Grinder. He's got to be careful with his uh, with his attacks here, but he, he does need to get some damage in to get this game. Over. Yeah, he needs to start attacking. He's got a he's got eleven man on board with another two in hand off a of Tron land. And that's a pretty far cry from dealing twenty. He needs to get uh, Peterson down to around fourteen. That's a sweet spot for torture around right now. But he can block that. He can kill this boggle. Again, the fault grinder is actually really big here. Literally and figuratively. This turned out to be quite the game. Yeah, the patricians, the strands into the scorn. So 
So Koval played a Tron land over here over a Snowland. He's unable to play Astro here. Uh, how much damage off Torch is it though? Is it actually lethal if he attacks with all three? Let's see, 6, 10, 13. He's got 12 Torch. In the Tron land instead of playing Snowland. Goes down to three off analysis. Another fault wow. grinder shows up. I'm thinking Koval might have this game outside of another mask off the top for the upset. A first strike enchantment would be pretty brutal here too. It's like an ethereal armor. Well, Koval just has to kill next turn. So first strike well, isn't going to do it. Not if he, he needs... gains 20, 20 life off of his lifelink guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always forgot about cloak lifelink. I'm so used to not caring about my life, my opponent's life totals. So, just so used to seeing the card and think 2-2 two, two trample. That's all it is. Well, he didn't get a lifelinker or a first striker, so. All right, well. That's it. Tron takes down game two. You the match? No, it was game two. Oh, so we'll see if he can't pull the upset and get the game three. That would be quite that would be quite the upset because it uh it seemed pretty like a pretty rough matchup. Yeah, it's a did not show up with the sideboard tools or enough of the sideboard tools. But if you draw the one of, you don't need more than one. It's kinda how the enchantment hate for boggles works. Bulk grinders were also just very impressive. There. I mean, he obviously needed the the scorn to yeah to sort of diminish Andreas's uh, forces there. But once he did, the the four fours like really just took over the battlefield. The four four bodies definitely pulled their weight. Ooh, yes, scorn and yeah. strength. That is a very. It doesn't have any pressure, but Boggles doesn't rebuild too well, so it might be enough to get there. This is going to be an interesting one for sure, because Pressureless Hand, nowhere near Tron with the Torch, but has Strands and Scorn, so he's going to be able to buy time. I would be ecstatic to open up on that hand. Oh um, yeah, that's Brian. definitely what you're looking for. Draws a Tron land off the top. I'm going to see the natural turn three Tron. I'm feeling it. Oh, what record do you need to uh, make the playoffs? I believe it is four and two, and both players are at a uh, three and three record right now. No, Koval is two and three. This is his second match, but Peterson is at three and three. I see. Okay. I thought, uh, right, never mind. I wasn't sure if the uh, thing was updated, but four and two, X and three doesn't get in there. Excuse me. Uh, two more towers off the top here, but we're gonna see an evoke drifter to draw some cards. <laughs> Koval's just looking for that pressure. He has quite a bit of time here with uh, Peterson staring at three lands and only a three three boggle on board. Hell sentinel. That's spicy. Next turn, he can just Palace Sentinel and Scorn. You might even want to hold the Scorn. I think you Strands first. Just really aggressive Strands, Cane 3 life, maybe? I don't know. My So do you play Strands or Sentinels here? What's, what's your line? I kind of like the pass and Strands aggressively to guarantee the Monarchy. I think I would just run out the Sentinels here. Run out the Sentinels? It's no fear of the, uh... I guess there really you isn't any take fear of a top deck enchantment. Just, you can just torches. If he, if he draws an enchantment to, like, get it, like, to get you, you can just, uh, torch his plant token. Yeah, the torch gets the there. Okay. I like the Monarch line, too. All right. That did it. 
Well, Tron gets the upset. Didn't even need the scoring for game three. Had it all, but didn't need it. So pretty big upset there. Uh, yeah. We saw the Boggles fail rate that game three. Game two, Boggles actually had a very solid hand and played a very good game of Magic, but Boggles showed why it doesn't do well in the face of hate. Uh, for sure. Good match, though. I would not have yeah, uh, it was. predicted it was that outcome. Neither would have I. Nice, nice match there. I had Boggles on the very, very favored side of things in my book. But... That's why we play the games, to see those upsets every once in a while. Uh, overall, not too bad. So next, I believe we're going to have uh, Omen and Koval here. So it's going to be the Tron again versus the Aristocrats deck, which has looked pretty awesome. I've, I'm actually a big fan of the deck. It's been great to watch it. There's yeah, it's definitely a rough involved. one to play against. They have a lot of uh, a lot of tricks, a lot of things you have to keep in mind, and a lot of chump blocks if you can't trample. But uh, I think we're about ready to go into break here to set up for the next round. So we'll see you guys in a bit. All right. <laughs> 